standard reduction potentials. In reaction in a galvanic cell, it is always a redox reaction that can be broken down into two half reactions. It would be convenient to assign a potential to each half reduction so that when we construct a cell from a given pair of half reaction, we can obtain the cell potential by simply summing or adding the half cell potentials. So for example, we have the, here a cell reaction of zinc and copper wherein our half reaction for anode is zinc and cathode is copper. The, cell, the standard cell potential for this um, galvanic cell is equal to the cell potential of zinc. plus the cell potential of the copper. So using, um, using voltmeter, the cell potential for this specific cell is 1.10 volt, which is equivalent to for zinc is 0 0.76 volt and for copper is 0 0.34 volt so this is what we call standard reduction potential it is the value corresponding to the reduction half reaction with all solutes at one molarity and all gases at one atmospheric pressure. So the standard reduction potentials for the most common reactions are given in the table, the next slide. So here, the following are the common hot reactions for different elements. So how are we going to use these values in finding the standard reduction potential for a cell, for a galvanic cell? So com by combining two half reactions that are listed in the table to, to obtain a balanced redox reaction often requires two manipulations. The first one is one of the reduction, half reaction must be reversed since redox reaction must involve a substance being oxidized and a substance being reduced. The half reaction with the largest positive potential will run as written or as a reduction. And the other half reaction will be forced to run in reverse, will be the oxidation reaction. The net potential of the cell will be the difference between the two. So since the reduction process occurs at the cathode and the oxidation process occurs at the anode, we can write the cell potential or the standard reduction potential of the cell is equal to the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode. Our second manipulation, so since the number of electrons lost must equal the number gain, the half reaction must be multiplied by integers as necessary to achieve the valence equation. However, the value of standard reduction potential is not changed when a half reaction is multiplied by an integer. So take note of that. So since the standard reduction potential is an intensive property, it does not depend on how many times the reaction occurs. So as you can remember, in our first lesson, the properties of substance, the intensive property does not depend on the amount of the molecules. 
So it, it is the property or substance that independent of any variable such as volume, mass. Okay, and then the potential is not multiplied by the integer required to balance the cell reaction. Okay, so let's have our example. Calculate the standard cell potential of the galvanic cell redox reaction. So we have here um, iron 3 plus plus copper arrow copper 2 plus plus iron 2 plus. So first, let's have the half reaction. So as we can observe, the oxidation number for iron is plus 3, and this is plus 2, and for copper is 0, then plus 2. Therefore, our... Um, oxidation is copper and our reduction is iron. So let's write our half reaction. So we need to add electrons to balance the half reaction. So we have to add one electrons so that the charge are balanced at both sides of this reaction. So this will be our cathode. Since it is the where the reduction occurs, okay. And for copper, we have here Cu arrow Cu two plus. So this is our anode. Since it it's being um, oxidized. So to balance, we need to balance the L, uh, the charge. So we're going to add one electron at the right side. Uh, two. Two electrons. Since we have zero charge at the left side. Okay. So now, after we have balanced the cell reaction, we have to um, identify the, the standard reduction potential for each um, half reaction. So we can get that from the table presented earlier. So going back to the table, we're going to find for iron and for copper. So for iron, the pertinent half reaction are so I'm going to write the excerpt from the table. It has a potential of zero point seventy seven volts, and for copper. is 0 0.34 volts. Okay. So for cathode, the iron, we have no problem. We can assign this one for 0 0.77 volt. But for anode, as we can see, the, the elements at both 
side are being interchanged. Therefore, we need to have, um, we need to change the sign for the value of the standard reduction. Therefore, the standard reduction potential for copper is 0 0.34 volts. Okay, so now we can obtain the valence cell reaction by summing the appropriate modified half reaction. So we're just going to add this reaction or the standard reaction, uh, standard reduction potential. So our cell reaction now with the valence redox reaction. is C O okay got E three plus plus C U and we have two okay so let's say they we have already um balance this um, redox reaction earlier. So this is the result of the balanced redox reaction. So we have 2 iron 3 plus plus copper arrow copper 2 plus plus 2 iron 2 plus. So for our cell potential standard reduction potential of each compartment is equal to 0 0.77 volts minus per anode of 0 0.34 volts. Therefore, our cell potential is 0 0.43 volts. Okay, so let's have your check your understanding. So consider this galvanic cell of aluminum and manganese. So give the balanced cell reaction and calculate for the cell um, standard reduction potential for the cell. So use your use a table as your guide in identifying the cell, the common half reaction.